Hello guys, Omni here. The second episode of Mandalorian came out this evening and I went ahead and checked it out. So just like last episode where I uploaded a little kid bit of a breakdown on it, this episode is actually going to be a little bit easier because I was wondering if I wanted to do just kind of like just the spoilers, just the little main things I wanted to touch upon because I don't know, sometimes those types of videos can run a little long and uh, yeah, so this episode actually is Shorter, sadly, than the last episode. So the runtime they said between this episode and episode three, they said would be very similar. So expect something just as short next week. So let's go ahead and start diving into the episode because it still manages to hold up and stay a little bit level. I would say this definitely is a little bit of a weaker episode than the last one. So on that level, who knows? This is just the uh, beginning of the season. So I'm sure it's going to pick up as things build, as we get more characters, as the plot thickens as it moves along so i'm not going to judge it too harshly on that but it still keeps its tone it keeps the aesthetic very in tune with the last episode so it is staying very consistent in the world that it's created so again if you haven't seen last week the well, last week's episode it was earlier this week if you haven't seen episode one uh or this episode i'm just going to say spoilers for both and we're going to go ahead and start diving right into it with the baby yoda species that we saw at the end of the episode it just like changed the game for this show already uh, here going forward, especially carrying over into this one because it very much picks off where we left off. He's just kind of has the cradle kind of hovering along as he's making his trek back to his ship. And uh, he comes across this little canyon thing. And this is where the actual Trandoshans come in uh, that we saw from the trailers, from the uh, promotional imagery of him fighting the Trandoshans in that little canyon. Uh, before they actually show up though, it was built up to really well because it was just like slow, quiet, nice. And you just see like a whoosh, a shadow move across the top of the Canyon. You, it doesn't put any focus on it. Not at all. It's easy for you to catch. And then as he starts to kind of shift and suspect something's around on the glare on his helmet, you see another one jump across the Canyon kind of repositioning. So I really loved the camera work. And the way that was shot, because it was just really, really well done. Uh, we got a new director this time around. It is Rick Famuyiwa. And, you know, the honestly, the change, it doesn't really feel too different from the last one. This still feels very much like a Clone Wars episode to me. I know the last one was directed by Dave Filoni. As from what I understand, I think each episode of the season is going to be directed by somebody different. And so far... I didn't really feel that jarring of a difference in tone here, but the way it was shot and handled was still very, very well done. Um, but my lord, the fight was just awesome. He takes him on hand to hand and the one tries to bum rush the cradle and he whips out that big old rifle with the tuning fork and we get a taste of what this thing can do and it it vaporizes the guy. He just turns to dust, nothing left but his like dust cloak and that's it. That thing just rips them apart. Loved it. Um, we see a little bit more of them fighting out. And when he finally dispatches the Trandosians, it, you, they drop their own tracking fob, which so somebody is still just handing out bounties, still trying to collect on this thing. So we, is it still Werner Herzog? Or are they just passing these out to anybody that managed to actually bring it in? Because it seemed like it was supposed to be some kind of on a down low kind of thing. Uh, so there's something fishy up with that, but you know, as they're walking along, baby Yoda walks around, just, just keeps kind of crawling out of his, uh, his basket as he's trying, anytime they take a break, uh, the Mandalorian got a little bit wounded during the fight with the Trandosians and he's like patching it up himself, but the baby keeps trying to get out of his little carriage to go over to walk up to him and he reaches out his hand to the wound like something's going to happen. And Mandalorian just keeps me like, ah. Get back in it. And every time it comes out, it's just kind of like, oh, he just like shrugs and just puts it back. Like you, you, like when you just have a cat that just doesn't understand, you don't get up on the desk and it keeps jumping up on the desk. And it was just so cute. So cute. They finally get back to his ship just to find it being torn apart by Jawas. Now, this is something I'm wondering if they're changing because on the lore, originally, I'm pretty sure that Jawas were just native to Tatooine. And they've never clearly stated what planet this is on, but there's a lot of things that clue me in that this might not be Tatooine. They still haven't declared that, so I don't know. Maybe it is. But these, these Jawas have red eyes and black cloaks, so it's a little bit different. 
Uh, so who knows? Maybe they've migrated off of Tatooine and they've just adapted to newer surroundings. I don't know. Very much similar. All these desert planets just start to look alike. Who knows? Maybe it's Jakku, but we didn't see any Jawas on Jakku last time we saw it in the uh, main trilogy. Uh, so who knows? But he goes back. He tries to track him down. Again, we kind of have a little bit of this mix of serious and comedic tones blending together when he's trying to like chase after them when they've stolen his parts but he before he goes chasing after him he hits them with that same rifle he shot the Trandoshans with and just completely dusts these things because it just obliter obliterates these Jawas and it's pretty freaking awesome I'm not going to even lie to watch that whole thing ensue the whole time like baby Yoda which is what I'm going to keep calling it because I have nothing else to call this thing just kind of keeps looking at him like what are you doing but that aside, it just sticks along still. And he uh, he chases after the sand crawler because he's making off with all the parts of his ship. He tries to scale it. He uh, throws some of them off of it. He gets, They're pelting him with junk, trying to get him to fall off the crawler. He finally makes it to the top. And then you just have like 15 Jawas all with those little... Uh, those stun guns that they used in uh, episode four and they just all hit him at the same time and just instantly paralyze him. And he just falls off like a plank and lands on the dirt and it just rides off into the sunset. Totally out of tone with this, like the, the comedy versus the serious. Like I remember the, the trailers for this, I really thought we were going to get a purely serious kind of take on this, but they are really mixing it up with the comedy and pushing some of that in there really hard. Now, I think that might rub some people the wrong way. I tend to actually like it. Um, though I would have liked for this to stay a little more down, dirty, and serious, if that makes any sense. So I'm not sure how I feel about it yet until we later see how it picks up, since this is just the beginning of the arc. So I don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out. So, in his defeat from the Jawas, he returns to Nick Nolte's character, which I looked up on the cast list because I'm pretty sure I, they haven't said his name out loud. It's like Kuil, K-U-I-I-L. Uh, but he goes back to him and asks him for help. It was like, oh, they took him off. They destroyed my ship. And it was like, they didn't destroy your ship. They just took your parts. We can still get them back. We just need to find the Jawas and you can trade with them. And it's like, they're mine. They belong to me. I'll take it back. It's like, no, you got to trade something. So he goes back, they locate the Jawas, you know, they, uh, he, they, he, and in his Mandalorian way, just starts to get all gruffy and huffy and puffy with them. And, uh, Nick Nolte has to talk him down. And it's like, at first they wanted to trade his parts for the, his Baskar, uh, metal. And he, the Nick Nolte tells him, he's like, no, a Mandalorian can't part with that. What is there is something else? And then they ask for the baby and then they're like, anything else? And then they say, the egg, the egg, the egg. And he, uh, so they want him to go after this egg of some sort. So they take him, he gets led off into this cave where I guess he's tracking a monster. I was really hoping we were going to see him fight like a crate dragon. That would might be a little much for this Mandalorian, at least, because I was hoping we're getting, like, we're getting little things from the uh, expanded stuff that might be coming back into play. I would love to see that. But instead, we get, like, this furry rhino thing. He goes into this cave. You know, all you see from the outside is pew, pew, pew. And, of course, the carriage is following him around because he can't be without it uh, out of his sight. Uh, but he leaves it outside the cave. So from the outside of the cave, you just see the blaster bolts light up the inside of the cave. And then he just gets tossed out. His plate's all damaged. And this hairy rhino looking thing just comes out and just starts charging at him. Uh, he th th just been kicked through the mud. The rifle no longer fires. He's not able to get to his blaster on his hip because they got knocked out of his hand. The only thing he's left with is his flamethrower, which doesn't really get him too far. His, he gets pul pulverized by this thing when it charges him. And all seems to be lost until he just pulls out this little knife out of his boot. And he's like, well, this is kind of it. I guess this is all I'm going to do. He just holds it out and hopes that it sticks him. And baby Yoda lifts up his hand. And you see the, the rhino just kind of come to a halt and just start floating. So this confirms what I was talking about in the last video, that this thing is force sensitive just inherently. And I, I believe that earlier it was definitely going to try to heal his wounds for him, but the Mandalorian just kept putting it back in the cradle. And he brings it back and he, that gives him a moment because the, the baby Yoda can only hold it up for so long and then it drops it and just passes out and falls asleep. 
but that gives Mando enough time to jab it in a vital spot on its body right there with the little knife that he had left, the only thing he had left to use at that moment, and managed to actually kill it. He scavenges the egg, which is like this hairy little thing. He takes it to the Jawas. They give him his parts back. Nick Nolte helps him build his, or put his ship back together in a little heroic montage, and we get that weird kind of rocky theme. So I guess, again, is some of the music at definitely different points in this definitely doesn't quite match the tone that it's going for. So I'm, I'm a little at odds with when I like and don't like the music. So it's starting to become a little bit of a repeating theme. I figured this wasn't going to be something we heard all the time. So I don't know who knows. This is the different kind of shift. Maybe this is something where we're going to kind of start to see a pattern going through, but this is just two episodes so far. So I'm still going to kind of hold out hope for this. Either way, I'm still enjoying the show, but I feel like this, again, might put off some of the people that are looking more for that down and dirty, like serious uh, smuggler, uh, seedy, scum and villainy kind of show. And this is definitely kind of earing, uh, steering away in a different kind of tone in that kind of way, at least in these initial two episodes. The first one played a little bit closer, but now that the baby's in the picture, it's getting very much very <laughs> slapsticky. Uh, but he flies off, gets the ship repaired. Again, he tries to reward Nick Nolte's character in this with some kind of payment. He even offers him a spot on a crew, and he's like, nah, uh, my, my the peace you've brought to my land is the reward enough, and all I need is your thanks. And they thank each other, and they part ways. And he takes off with Baby Yoda in the in his little like hover crib in the cockpit of his sh rebuilt ship, and he takes off. And that's the end of the episode. That is it. This episode just flew by. It was not even, if you counted the recap in the beginning and the ending credits, I think this episode is only 27 minutes long, which is like 10 minutes shorter than the first episode. So I am really kind of curious what's going to go on. Now, the I think maybe that's for budgetary reasons because this this show definitely with the visuals and everything that they're doing in it does is going to cost a lot of money for the VFX and all that kind of stuff. But still, as like kind of fans with like shows like Game of Thrones and stuff like that, and not talking about how it ended up, but talking about the seasons before, like stuff like that, we're kind of I think there's like a current expectation that we have with kind of these kind of projects, and those were always delivered at like these almost full hour long episodes, and I think. Again, this is going to be something that may disappoint some people. And uh, me, aside just being the Star Wars fan I am, I, I'm taking it as it is. Whatever they give me, I'm going to take it and absorb it because I'm really enjoying this world, this take, this ver venture, even though it's not quite what I was expecting. So this kind of goes into it. There's a little line, too, when he talks about is like, I don't quite understand what happened to you back there. And he's like, I don't really know what happened either. Uh, the baby wasn't hurt. And uh, it seems like maybe... Maybe it's so far that after, of course, we know like in the original trilogy, people really didn't believe in the force. And, you know, at this point, that was what definitely about a, within the recent decade and people have forgot about it over the course and between Revenge of the Sith and the even like in the Revenge of the Sith, they talk about in the aftermath and all that stuff when they're building up the universe and going into episode seven that the greater whole of the galaxy probably has never even seen a Jedi. But however, being in Mandalorian, that should be a core part of his culture. So I don't know if he's saying I don't know, necessarily understand what happened. Is he, Does he not understand or know what the Force is? I mean, he's a foundling, so he hasn't been a part of the Mandalorian culture his entire life. But I still feel like that would be something that came up. Is this his first encounter with the Force? Does he not know about the Jedi, he, given he was actually part of one of the major battles? Uh, not part of, but in one of the major battles of the Clone Wars? Certainly, I think he would know about Jedi. So maybe not. I don't know. I'm really curious to see how this plays into it. And I think a lot of people, again, was expecting this to be a show that does not have the Force in it. This was going to be more about the people who rough and tough it in the world who don't have that kind of thing, but this baby being a major part of... Now, I'm sure the characters we're going to follow throughout the series aren't going to be uh, Force-sensitives. I highly doubt that, but having a Force-sensitive somewhere in there and that being like kind of the primary focus of definitely the last episode in this one, and according to John Favreau here, where he talked about this the first episode, the spoiler at the end, you know, the reveal of the baby Yoda, 
he talks about that being a pivotal plot point for the rest of the story. So I'm curious to see how that shifts the tone and how that's going to rub everybody else uh, bringing in some kind of major force sensitive creature or character as a primary part of the plot thread of this uh, series, this season. So it's really interesting to see how people are going to react to this because again, I think as far as the last episode, I definitely still think the first episode was a lot better overall than this. This wasn't a bad episode, but definitely it continues that tone where this seems like a live action animated series. This looks like yet again, something that would have played out and fit tonally with the Clone Wars, like a side episode of the Clone Wars. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. There's plenty of fans of that thing. I love the Clone Wars. I love Rebels from what I've seen of it. I do. I am very familiar with that tone, but again, it just clashes with the expectations that were set up for this show, given the trailers and everything that we've heard talking about going into it. I do have to say that I really liked the when it when it's not doing anything they couldn't do with a puppet or uh, animatronics, the little baby Yoda, they they pull off some really good like practical effects with animating this thing we, through animatronics and puppetry that it's really effective and it works really well. And I forgot, I skipped over the part when they were at Nick Nolte's hut. Uh, Baby Yoda hops out of his crib and starts chasing around with this frog. He tells him to put it down, leave it alone. And then later we cut back and over and he he's got the toad in his mouth and he just swallows the frog whole. And it just got a laugh out of me. It's again, the tone, it's just weird. I don't know. So I really want to know what you guys thought of this episode. So let me know if you've watched episode two of The Mandalorian. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this episode, where you think it's going to go from here. I definitely think the Imperials or someone in the X Empire is definitely wanting this thing killed. So because it is a threat, anything that can use the force, they know what this thing is. Clearly, someone does, especially the scientists, at least who wants to study the thing. Um, it is a rare species as what we know from at least the expanded universe. So. I can see where that's going to come into play and where what's the Mando going to do with it? He's going to take it back to his enclave or what are they going to, what's he going to do with his baby? I, I highly doubt he's going to tear it in for the reward, but I, I don't know. We'll have to see. What do you guys think? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. And if you guys, as always, want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys, everybody that participates in the comments. Everybody that has the com nice little conversations about your opinions about everything we talk about. Really love you guys. You all are helping make this channel a great place to hang out and be. And I really appreciate that. So thank you all for stopping in. That is going to be it for this video. This is coming out really early in the morning because I just ended my uh, stream on Twitch where I was playing Jedi Fallen Order for the last four hours. And I'm loving that. It's actually really surprisingly good. For what I was expecting, and I'm having a blast with it. It's pretty hard, but again, you know, I kind of chose a higher difficulty, so that's kind of on me. But so, if you guys want to tune in, that make sure to follow me on Twitch. Uh, I'm hoping to be on later tonight, uh, about 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That'll be technically Sunday morning by the time I actually log in. I, that's about the times I actually am active. Uh, I'm not on as frequently as I used to be, but I'm trying. I want to, I'm definitely going to be powering through this game because I've been looking forward to it for so long. So I'll also be posting a review for that once I actually complete the game. So hopefully I'll have that done here in the next week or so. So thank you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video and may the force be with you always. Take care, everybody.